Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this final lesson in Week 31, where we are revising work for our physics paper. Right, so let's carry on. First question is an electricity question. It says an 8 ohm resistor, a light bulb, and a rheostat are placed. Okay, 8 ohm resistor, a light bulb, and a rheostat. That thing there with a the line through it, that's a rheostat. And what's a rheostat? It's a variable resistor. It's like a dimmer switch. We can change the electricity going through it by changing the amount of resistance. Okay, and they are connected to an 8.4 volt battery with an internal resistance of 0.4 ohms. Showing the diagram. The power of the light bulb is 8.1 W watts. The rheostat is changed until the ammeter shows a reading of 1,5 amps when the switch is closed. So we mess with this until we get a current of 1.5. Now it says calculate the resistance of the light bulb. Okay, well that's pretty easy because we have the power and we've got the current. Okay, so we can use the equation P is equal to I squared R Therefore, R is going to be P over I squared, which is going to be 8 comma 1 over 1 comma 5 all squared. And I just need my calculator for that. So it's going to be 8.1 divided by bracket, oh sorry, divided by bracket 1.5 bracket squared equals 3 comma 6. 3 comma 6 what? Ohms. Guys, please remember your units. Okay, so that's the resistance. 3 comma 6. Now it says calculate the resistance of the rheostat when the reading on the ammeter is 1.5 amps. In other words, we need to work out the total resistance, external resistance of the circuit so that we can work out this resistance. So we've got EMF is equal to I big R plus little r, right? The EMF we got is 8.4, okay? The current we're told is 1 comma 5 times by the total external resistance, which is what we're trying to work out, plus the little internal resistance of 0 comma 4. So therefore we can solve for big R by going 8 comma 4 divided by 1 comma 5 minus 0 comma 4 is equal to R. So let's pop that into our calculators. So we've got 8.4 divided by 1.5 equals minus 0 comma 4 equals, so that's 5 comma 2, so the total external resistance is 5 comma 2 ohms, right? But that is made up of this 3 comma 6 and those two that are in parallel. So we can subtract 3 comma 6 from this to find out what the parallel combination are made up of. So that is minus 3.6 is going to be 1.6, that leaves us 1.6 ohms. So therefore, we can say that 1 over 1 comma 6 is going to be equal to 1 over the rheostat plus 1 over 8. So therefore we can say that 1 over 1 comma 6 minus 1 over 8 is equal to 1 over the rheostat. So we are going to put that in our calculators again. So we've got 1 over 1.6 minus 1 over 8 close bracket equals a half. So therefore we know that 1 over 2 equals 1 over R, the resistance the rear set. Therefore the resistance the rear set is 2 ohms. Ta-da! That's 2 ohms there. Sure, nice bit of work that you had to do for your six marks. So you had to think it through and think about what you needed to work out before we could actually work it out. So basically the first thing we need to do is work out what the total external resistance was from the EMF equation and then work it out back slowly to work out what this was. Okay, so we've done that.
It now says the rheostat is changed so the resistance of the rheostat increases dramatically. So we're increasing this dramatically, okay? How will the following readings be influenced? Write down only increases, decreases, or remains the same. Okay, so what is going to happen to the total resistance of the circuit? Okay, well think about it. Let's say for example, I've got 1 over 2 plus 1 over 8. Okay, D is equal to 1 over R, right? So do you agree 1 over R is going to be common denominator of 8? That is going to be 4 plus 1. So therefore we've got that 1 over R is going to be 5 over 8, therefore R is 8 over 5, which is 1 comma something, okay? Now let's say we dramatically increase the resistance to say 10 ohms. So now we've got 1 over 10 plus 1 over 8, common denominator is 80, we've got 8 plus uh, 10, which is 18 over 80, is 1 over R. Therefore, R is going to be 80 divided by 18. So if we pop that in our cal calculators, you're going to go 80 divided by 18, which is going to be 4.44 dot dot dot. So do you see that basically by increasing this resistance, what are we doing? We're increasing the total resistance in the circuit. So therefore, the total resistance in the circuit is going to increase. What is going to happen to the EMF of the battery? Well, if we increase the EMF of the battery, sorry, is going to remain the same because the EMF of the battery is the maximum amount of voltage that the battery can supply the circuit at any time. So therefore, the EMF doesn't change. But what happens to the reading on voltmeter V1? V1 is the amount of energy it takes to get this around the circuit. And if we increase the volt, the resistance, what's going to happen? We have to increase the voltage to get it around the circuit. So V1 is going to increase. And there you go, grade 12. That's your nice equation on, on electricity. Now let's move on to the photoelectric effect. It says learners perform an experiment to investigate the effect of a wavelength of light on the photoelectric effect. They radiate a metal disc M with three light sources of different wavelengths and note the ejection of the photoelectrons from the metal. The results obtained are shown in the table. And guys, don't just skip over the table, read it properly. So first of all, they tell you the wavelength is 10 to the minus 9. And then you've got, it ranges from 480 to 570, but please note it goes 480, 620, then 570. So note that the wavelength isn't numerically increasing. They've messed with you a little bit there. At 480, the electrons are ejected and moving away. At 620, there are no electrons are ejected. And at 570, the electrons are ejected, but they're not moving away. First, it says define the photoelectric effect in words. Guys, you need to learn your definitions. But basically, photoelectric effect is basically the emission of electrons when light of a certain incident frequency is shone on a metal. Then it says, write down an investigative question for this experiment. So, the most important thing about writing down an investigative question is the fact that there should be a question mark at the end of the sentence. If there isn't a question mark, then you've made a statement. Okay, so you need a question mark. That's number one. Number two, your investigative question has to actually relate two variables to each other. And the variables have to be variables within the experiment. So it could be along the lines of how does the wavelength affect the ejection of photoelectrons? That would be a very good investigative question. Okay, that's it. Or will electrons be ejected and move as the wavelength is increased? In, uh, wavelength of the incident light is increased, etc., etc. Something like that. You basically want to have a question and it must relate wavelength to the ejection of photoelectrons. Now it says give a reason why light source A and not light source B will eject electrons from metal disc M. So, light source A, okay, so what you need to realize is that E is equal to HF which can be rewritten as HC over lambda. 
Another way of thinking about it is equal to C is equal to lambda frequency, okay? So as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases, and as the wavelength increases, the frequency decreases. So this guy here has got a greater wavelength, therefore he's got a lower frequency. Okay, so what is happening is that the light from A has got a higher frequency and its frequency is above the threshold frequency of the metal and therefore the electrons are ejected where this light wave with a wavelength of 620 nanometers is actually got a lower frequency and it's lower than the threshold frequency. Now it says calculate the work function of metal M. I would say that this dude here is the one that is causing is match the threshold frequency. It's the wavelength that matches the threshold frequency because electrons are ejected but they are not moving away. So they've just 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 got out of the metal. So therefore we've matched the threshold frequency. But we know that C is equal to lambda F. So they've asked us to calculate the work function, which is this here. So we're going to use this formula with that number there. So we've got E equals Planck's constant, and Planck's constant is 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 34 times by the speed of light, which is 3 times by 10 to the 8, all divided by 570, and this is important, times by 10 to the minus 9. Please, guys, don't forget to put that extra bit in. So we're going to put this in the calculator. So we got 6.63 exponent negative 34 times 3 exponent 8 all divided by 570 exponent negative 9 hmm, equals 3.49 times by 10 to the minus 19. So it's 3.49 times by 10 to the minus 19. And remember again to look at the question. It says calculate the work function. And work function is energy, so the unit is joules. Okay. Now it says calculate the maximum speed with which the ejections, sorry, calculate the maximum speed with which the electrons will be ejected from metal disk M when it is radiated with light source A. Okay, so now we're saying, E equals HF0 plus a half MV squared. But this here is the work function which we've just worked out. So that's great. And this is equal to HF or HC over lambda using this wavelength now. And then we can get the V and the mass obviously is the mass on electron. So we've got h which is Planck's constant so that's 6 comma 6 3 times by 10 to the negative 34 times by the speed of light which is 3 times by 10 to the 8 all over this new wavelength a's wavelength so that's 480 times by 10 to the negative 9 minus the work function of 3.49 times by 10 to the negative 19 is equal to the kinetic energy of a half mv squared. And I'm not going to do those numbers yet because otherwise it might be a bit scary. So let's do this bit first. So we've got 6.63 exponent negative 34 times 3 exponent 8 equals all divided by 480 exponent negative 9 equals minus 3.49 exponent negative 19 equals so we've got 6.54 times by 10 to the negative 20 so that's 6 comma 54 times by 10 to the minus 20 is equal to a half times the mass of an electron which is 9.5 one one times by ten to the minus thirty one V squared. So now we can work out V because we can just take that number there 
and divide by the stuff on the right hand side here. So it's 0, 0,5 times 9.11 exponent negative 31 close bracket equals square root answer equals sure. <laughs> so we've got 378845 comma 1. 378845 comma 1. So it's 378845 comma 1 meters per second is the maximum speed with which the electrons are emitted when they have this incident light shining on it, which is pretty fast. Now it says the light source, the light source A is blue. Okay, they say and the light source B is orange. Orange. Okay. And they say, which color possibly is light source B? Choose from violet, green, or red. Okay, so remember we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. We know that blue works very well. It's awesome. And we know that orange, which is over here, doesn't work. Not working. Okay, so the options of what we want to be the threshold frequency are either yellow or green, but they've told us to choose between violet, green or red, so therefore the correct answer is green. So green is our threshold frequency light. Right, grade 12, that's it for paper 1. Please go through the sections again if you didn't understand what we were doing and watch the videos, make sure you understand, do the press practice questions on the turntable system and then I've uploaded theory questions as well as well as old exam papers and their memos and then go through these again as well. Have a great day.